The second season of Attack on Titan is actually quite short with 12 episodes. But then again, there's a hell of a lot going on in these episodes. At IMDb, this season has 112.1 out of 120 points, so a very solid 9.34 star rating. Also, this season comes with what I think is the best opening. Shinzo wo Sasagio. Leave a thumbs up if you like this anime, but especially this season as much as I do. And here we go. Panic because of the wall titans. First hide him again according to the principle, what I can't see isn't there. And also ask the priest, who seems to know a lot more and is damn tired of life when he's chilling so close to the edge. Then when Hanji wanted to show him a shortcut down, the priest really wanted that. Fucking psycho. But she doesn't give him the time of day, though. And there's someone who throws us back in time. In a castle with Connie, Sasha, Rainer and Berthold where the titans are coming. So on the horses, swarm out and see what's going on while Mike distracts the titans. Eren is awake again while Mikasa hasn't left his sight. Enough lazing around, time for some action. For this, Armin comes over to spread some panic again because titans have broken into the wall. One of them was caught by Mike and now he wants to escape with the horse. Only the beast titan grabs his horse to take the option away from him again. Next, Mike loses a leg to the genetic gold mine, which is first squished by the beast titan so that it can talk to Mike. Pull the gas from the vertical maneuvering equipment and then he get to be dinner for four more titans. Armin is puzzled as to how the titans could get into the wall. Anyway, first a night excursion with the class. Sasha wants to see if everything is okay in her home village. On the way, played trackers and found footprints. In the village, a titan eats quite relaxed the mother of a child, which Sasha would like to kill, but she can't get through the neck with a loosey axe. So grab the kid and get out of there. Blind the pursuing titan and get picked up by familiar old faces as the reward for survival. More or less a happy end for Sasha. Unlike for Connie. He has also arrived in his old village, arrives at his house to discover a titan there who is too weak to move. And something is strange here. The horses are still there and just as they wanted to move on, the titan also speaks to Connie, which Rainer interrupts however and so they can continue. When visiting the wall, it is relative quickly clear, there is no hole in the wall. Well, first enough worked, therefore take a break in the castle. Further plans are forged. Eden should again close the hole, only this time not with a XXL stone, but with his hardening. The pastor breaks the silence when he sees all the refugees. Well, actually there's only the hint that Krista is something special. Only she's just at the front line where the castle is attacked by titans. So it goes back in time a bit. In the castle there's liqueur with writing that nobody can read. No one can, except Ymir. She also ridicules Connie's theory, who still thinks that the titan on his house is his mother. Now the titans are there, getting one next leper after the other. Only a little too late, because the door is broken and apparently a smaller titan has already sneaked into the castle, which immediately meets Rainer. So with a pitchfork in the eyes and then greet him with a cannon body check, so that he is stuck for the time being. Connie is attacked by a second one, saved by Rainer and together they kick him out of the window. Quickly Rainer is treated, outside everything is going well. At least until the beast titan throws a stone and the titans get reinforcements. All with equipment are eaten, nobody can do anything. Nobody except Ymir. She grabs a knife, suicides down and turns into a titan. Backstory between Krista and Ymir. During a training in the Iron Kingdom, the two have lost their way and also want to drag an injured man behind them. In the process, Ymir doesn't leave Krista's side because she knows her true identity and after a motivational speech, they continue, just not together. Distract Krista, turn into a titan and go ahead with the injured one. Back again, Ymir fights with the other titans. In the process, she brings down the tower, saving all the others. But the titans also survive, which means that Ymir is being eaten and the others now also have problems. But don't worry, Mikasa and the reinforcements have arrived. 
Here Eren even gets his first and only titan kill in his human form. All the titans are taken out of the way and even Ume could be saved. Without leg and arm. But that grows back. Back on the wall, the injured are treated. Rainer shows his acting skills and after a short discussion with Berthold, they have made a decision. But first, Hannes is there, who reports that there was no hole in the wall at all, which makes the mystery of the invading titans more and more mysterious. During this hard riddle, Rainer and Berthold take the chance and confess everything to Eren. The two are the armored and colossal titan who kicked in the gate 5 years ago. How flatly and bluntly he said it all makes this scene absolutely legendary. And just as bluntly, he asks Eren to go along with them. But it's not really a secret anymore for the others anyway, because the Survey Corp already suspected that Rainer and Berthold are titans as well. Eren refuses the knight's offer, Mikasa slices the two a bit who then transform and want to escape with Eren and Ymir. But as said, Eren refuses the offer. He transforms as well and tries to beat Reina. So above is the colossal upper body and below is the armor titan. Only the colossal plays for time by emitting smoke all the time so that he can't be attacked with the vertical maneuvering equipment. So everything is decided at the bottom where Eren is struggling hard and Mikasa can't help either. Eren doesn't give up though. He punches and gets a hard counter right away. Then Eren remembers Annie's fighting technique and uses it to fix Rainer, damage the armor and cut off an arm. But to finish Rainer off completely, more tactics are needed. So off to the wall to continue fighting him there. And without the knee pads, Rainer is only half as strong. Eren can manage to break Rainer's neck with a weakening, but Rainer also has a few tricks up his sleeve. He pushes Eren a bit forward and calls for help, which Berthold's hears immediately implements and drops down with a thump. Rainer uses the bang to bite Eren out of his neck and flee together with Berthold and Ymir. Most of the others have fainted because of the heat and the pressure. Erwin and Pixie get everything reported and then there's a bit of background for now with Mikasa and Eren boxing some retards who stole Armin's bread. And now Mikasa is minimally pissed off because no one is pursuing them. But the thing is that it is just not possible. After all, there are no horses on the other side and there are too many passed out to do anything at all. So they are a bit depressed until Hannes uses the motivational jutsu and reminds them that Eren would never give up and that they don't have to worry. Reinforcement comes with Erwin, who hears from Hanji where the four should be. So there's no time to lose and they start the pursuit. Rainer and Berthold want to take a break for now and talk a bit where Eren can neither transform nor escape because the titans are already waiting for them below. Rainer can use the time perfectly to think clearly again. His psychological burden that he's actually a warrior and not a soldier. The guilt that among other things because of Marco died and so on. He was now finally able to properly process everything and thus be able able to form a normal thought again. Ymir knows who the real enemy is. She also knows a bit about the beast titan and thanks to Reiner's deal to protect Krista, she suddenly sides with the enemy. But don't worry Eren, the survey corpse is already there. The pursuit will be a bit tighter than Reiner might have suspected. A squad explores Connie's old village and they discover that the titan on the top of Connie's house has really strong similarities with his mother. Everything that happened there is really very strange. But we don't have time for that for now. After all, Eren still has to be rescued. Ymir does the snitch move so you don't need to save her anymore. Rainer and Berthold have to leave a bit earlier than expected and Eren thinks that Stump is Trump and tries to break Rainer with his stumps. Of course, without success. But also the new member of the bad guys causes quite some problems. Ymir wants to get Krista to be able to protect her. Therefore first some past of Ymir. She was chosen as a child to lead a sect. She actually found that quite nice. At least there was enough to eat. But such things are forbidden there so she lies and is turned into a titan together with the other cultists. With a bit of luck she meets Reiner's troop in titan form and was able to snag someone there to become human again. With the newly self imposed condition to never lie again. In addition, Krista or Historia from the royal family is the absolute priority for her. Umi transforms and grabs her, then rejoins Rainer. So it's back on the horses for the survey corps, 
out of the forest and on after them. Erwin has a plan and separates from the others for the time being. Historia tries to persuade Ymir who remains stubborn. So Historia simply switches sides. Mikasa almost grabs Berthold who seeks shelter with Reiner. They can't get through the protective hands with their swords, but their words still get through. Except that doesn't do any good. Whatever, then plan B. Erwin comes riding in from the front with a herd of titans to stop Reiner a bit and give him no way out. Now the survey corp really sacrificed their hearts to save Eren. A few sacrifice even their whole bodies and Erwin his arm. Armin manages to make Bertolt careless by telling him about Annie's non-existent torture. Erwin frees Eren, Mikasa saves him and together they want to escape again. Even with Historia. Yeah, at least if it were that easy. Rainer now throws titans around, hits Eren and Mikasa who meet an old acquaintance again. The titan who ate Eren's mother is right in front of Eren in Mikasa's eyes. This is the opportunity for Hannes to finally take revenge and fix his old mistake. Just like the others from the survey corps, he does his best. Eren is freed but can't transform yet. He even bites off pieces while trying. In the meantime, the survey corps suffers losses. Among them, Hannes. The titan now hasn't only killed Eren's mother, but now also killed Hannes. Eren despairs, Mikasa gives him new hopes, thanks him and with that Eren doesn't give up anymore. He punched as a human the titan and every other titan joins in now. They are now letting loose on that titan while the survey corps want to retreat again. Pushing the titans on Reiner and Berthold, running away while Ymir helps Reiner and Berthold and stays behind. This allowed them to escape as well. Back in safety, Eren wants to learn to control other titans and close the hole of the wall with his hardening. In addition, it's no more or less certain that every titan was actually a human before and the villagers of Connie's home village were turned into titans. Once again, let's come to a conclusion. We have 12 good, no average or bad deposits here. So again, a very, very awesome season. A great season in which a lot happens and you learn a lot of new things.